Hi. <laughs> By the way, sorry, English is not my first language, so if I say things that do not make sense, I'm sorry, I speak French. <laughs> so, here I am. I'm miles away from the coast of Florida. I'm underwater, and I'm holding this little hogfish that I just got. I'm already thinking, how am I going to cook this fish tonight? And all of a sudden, there is an eight-foot tiger shark that appears in front of me. It does not look happy, <laughs> and I can tell that he's having the same thought I was having about little fish just a moment ago. <laughs> my heart is pounding in my chest, and I can see that the shark can sense it. Right now, I'm thinking, why am I not in front of my TV right now? Why did I pick this lifestyle? What is wrong with me? And then my next thought is, hey, this is the food chain. The little fish just learned he was not at the top of it. And here I am learning the, about the exact same lesson. You don't really know the kind of person you are until you face with a life or death situation. Just by a raise of hand, who thinks that they would panic completely? <laughs> who thinks that it would remain completely calm? Who would probably push their dive button in front of them, hoping that the shark eats them instead? <laughs> There's a difference between the person you, you think you are and the person you actually are. And sometimes, in certain situations like this one, it doesn't even matter the type of person you are. So my name is Valentine Thomas. I'm 30 years old, and I quit everything I had in life to become a spiritual woman. I now travel the world to catch my own food while freediving. Most people that I come across think that I've been spivishing my entire life. They think that, oh, this girl, she must be so courageous to do something. Uh, it's actually very far from reality. I'm actually a big wuss. But that never stopped me from pursuing what I love. Spivishing is a very weird sport, but it became my deepest passion. And my journey to finding this out was not an easy one. I'm... You would, you would never imagine when you see a picture of me struggling to get food or in the middle of the ocean, you would never think that 10 years ago I was far, far away from the ocean. I'm born and raised in Montreal, Canada, where, yes, there's lakes and rivers, but I've never been really big on the water. And to be honest, the water is way too cold for me over there anyways. And also, when I was 14 years old, I went on a holiday with my parents at the side of France, and I almost drowned. I passed out underwater, I got caught in an undertow, and the lifeguard had to come save me, the helicopter came, it was a horrible day. Like, at this stage of my life, the water and I were definitely not friends. But the biggest thing that kept me from pursuing a lot of big things in life, or kept me away from the ocean, was the, my daily struggle with anxiety. I was prisoner of my own mind, of my own body. When I was a teenager, I got ruthlessly bullied in high school, and that had a very big impact on me. And it created a lot of insecurities. When I was 19 years old, I started suffering from severe panic attacks. And doing little things such as going to school or going for a drink became a big challenge for me. I didn't want to take medication, so with the help of my best friend Dominique and with a lot of work in therapy, I managed to face those fears. So I was able to not take the meds and do it one meter at the time, facing my irrational fears. And the process of doing that was to make the uncomfortable comfortable. And that kind of became my way of living after that. I was putting myself in uncomfortable situation until that became a source of comfort. But before I link all of that with spivishing, let's just start from the beginning. So I've always been a very, very career-orientated person. I was dreaming of becoming the biggest criminal lawyer in the country. My idea of success was to be in the top of my field, to have a big house, to have a fancy car. I just wanted to be bigger. I wanted to be bigger with those bullies. I want to look at them and say, you're the loser and not me. And when you look at this closer, you realize that all I was doing is just giving them into their games and taking the wrong path just by doing that. 
My family is a group of intellectual. My mom is a corporate lawyer, and she spent many, many nights in the office. She actually still sends me university applications because she thinks I'm having midlife crisis a little bit too early. <laughs> So I follow this path. My parents thought that success was based on studying hard, having a respectable and stable profession. So I followed this path. I went and did my law degree, and then I studied for my master. But something was still wrong, and I couldn't put my finger on it. I just couldn't take the plunge. I couldn't, take, I couldn't push myself to enter the system that I spent my entire life preparing for. I know it's not because I'm a millennial, it's not because I'm lazy, it's actually just because I could not picture myself doing the exact same thing for the next 40 years. But what would I do instead? That's the only thing I've been told. So I did what a lot of young and scared people would do, I just ran away. I grabbed my passport, I moved to London, and still not sure what I would do, I subscribed to university again and I studied for two years to do my conversion course to be a lawyer in the UK. But to nobody's surprise, I was still unhappy. I was in my early 20s at that stage, so I just threw myself into a life of partying. I went traveling all around Europe, I was dancing as often as I could, I was drinking myself to delusional happiness. <laughs> Everybody seemed so happy around me. It just seemed normal. But to tell you the truth, I've never felt more alone and disconnected in my entire life. I needed a change of direction ASAP. I started working in finance, and I really liked it. But then I learned that sometimes it's not the decisions that you make that has the biggest impact on your life. I met this guy named Eduardo, and he taught me about this weird sport that I've never heard of before, and it was called spearfishing. So I've never pictured myself as an outdoorsy door. As a, sorry, I never pictured myself as an outdoorsy girl, not in a million years. But here I was, ditching, partying in Ibiza to go in Africa to live in the most basic conditions, to catch my own food and share it with my friends and the local community. And this was a world that I never imagined I would find my true calling in life. <laughs> Definitely not. So I was all of a sudden discovering a world where I was eating the best food I ever had in my life. It was one where I was pushing my body to new limits that I never even knew existed. It's a world where I was sharing and living and helping different communities all around the world. And it's also one where my ecological footprint was at its minimum. And it's also a world that I never thought was accessible to me, especially considering how scared I was of the ocean, especially after my accident when I was younger. So when I was 28 years old, I just decided to go all in. I womaned up, I left my job, I sold most of the things I had, and I went spearfishing. <laughs> and of course, I don't have the stability of a full-time job, but I made very decent money by doing something that I love. I hosted a TV show last year, I take people fishing, and I'm just loving it. And the ocean that was my biggest fear became my home. And yes, it's a scary and dangerous place sometimes, and yes, sometimes I do put my life on the line, but I felt that facing an entire life of unhappiness would have been way more dangerous for me. So you don't really find out who you truly are and how to become a better person by staying inside of your comfort zone. And it's by putting myself in the least comfortable position that I managed to find the true meaning in my life. So here I was, miles away from the, miles away from the coastline of Florida. I was holding this little fish on the water, facing an eight-foot tiger shark. I keep poking it, normally that makes them go away, and I was, trying to make, I was trying to remain calm as the shark was getting more and more aggressive. He had his mouth open, I could see his teeth, he was rolling his eyes back, and 
<laughs> I knew at that moment that the shark could have killed me at any second. But I stood my ground, I kept staring at it, and I kept poking it away. And at some point, the shark turned around and swam away. And this is what I want to share with you today. Is when you're facing your own shark, you're going to be surprised about how strong you are. You're going to be surprised about the person you actually are. And just keep poking it, and you're going to see you are going to be able to confront your deepest fear by doing that. Thank you. <laughs>